Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can chat with 100 different YouTube videos from your favorite content creator using tools like Langchain, Pinecone, and ChatGPT. And by the end of this tutorial, you're going to be able to create your own fully functioning website just like this, where you can ask your favorite content creator any questions and get personalized responses and links back to the original source video so you can continue watching your favorite content. In fact, if you would like to try out the app yourself for free before building it, I have a link to it down in the description below. And to make your life even easier, I've also provided a link to all of the source code so you can copy it and use it to help headstart your next AI project. So with all that out of the way, let's go over the five quick steps it takes to build this next AI project. Oh wait, real fast, before we do that, I just wanna say welcome to the channel if this is your first time here. My name is Brandon Hancock, and on this channel, I teach you how to become an AI full stack developer. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, you're definitely gonna check out a bunch of the other tutorials I have on this channel after watching this video. All right, so let's get right back to it. So here's an overview of the five different steps we need to take to create an AI version of our favorite YouTuber. First, we're gonna run some Python scripts to download all the videos. Second, we're going to transcribe all these videos by sending them over to Assembly AI. Third, we're going to take back all of our transcriptions and send them over to our Pinecone database so we can access them later. Fourth, we're going to get into some web development and build in our backend API to where we can start asking questions. And then fifth and finally, we're going to work on building our chat window so we can start chatting with our favorite YouTuber. So I know that might seem like a lot. Don't worry, I'll be able to answer any questions you have down in the comments below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into step number one. So the goal of step number one is to download YouTube videos from our favorite content creator. And to help speed up this process, I've already provided all of the different scripts I've used to download all the different videos. And to help you throughout this video, I've actually provided the exact command that I'm going to run to do everything. I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that you've cloned down this repo and there's actually a link to it down in the description below. Once you've actually set up your code repo and cloned it to your local computer, we need to first go ahead and run the scrape YouTube channel video script. So here's a breakdown of actually what's happening in this script. And because this isn't a Python tutorial, I'm not gonna walk you through every line of code. We're actually just gonna keep everything very high level and feel free to dig in afterward by yourself. Here's what's going on in this file. What we've done is we've created a command line interface for this Python script to where we can pass in the channel of the YouTube video we'd like to scrape, the number of videos we'd like to scrape, and then also the output file once we've pulled down everything. So in our case, something like our output file that we're actually shooting for is something like this. It's a CSV file where we have the link to the video we're watching and then the title of the video. We're gonna use this later on in our metadata, but we'll get to that later. Back to the script. In order to run this script, what you would need to do is to run a line just like this. Let me clear it real fast. You need to run something just like this to where you would say, I want to run Python, the name of the file, and be sure you actually point to the proper directory. Then you say the name of the YouTube channel, and you can grab this by going to over here. Ignore the videos, but you'll actually just copy and paste it, and you want the at user handle of the creator you want to copy. Then after that, you say how many YouTube videos you want to download. And then finally, what is the file where you want to output all of the titles and links, just like I showed you over here. Once you run that script, I'm just gonna go ahead and run it so you can see what it looks like. But what it'll do is it will take a few seconds to blow everything down. And once it's finished, you have a file that looks just like this. Awesome. So one thing that you'll have to do before you can actually start scraping videos is you'll need to set up your Python environment. I should have mentioned that earlier, but if you go over to the setup folder, I've created this create env shell script. So if you have a Linux or Mac computer, you can easily start creating your own Conda environment. In my case, I can already show you, I created a YouTube chat Conda environment. So feel free to do the same thing. I already have all the requirements that you'll need to start running Python script. And if you get stuck at anything, feel free to leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help. That's what we're gonna do. First off, just start downloading all of the, uh, the links to the YouTube videos and their titles, which now leads us to our next step where we start downloading the actual files themselves. And to start downloading files, what you'll actually need to do is click on this YouTube download.py file. And once again, let's just keep everything very high level. You'll notice down here, we are once again setting up a command line interface where we need to pass in the name of the CSV file that we just created. In our case, that was the alexhermosi.csv. And then we need to say, where do we want to output all of the YouTube videos we're about to download? So here's actually what that would look like in command line. Once again, we're gonna run a Python script to this YouTube downloads file. And we're pointing to our Alex Hormozy CSV. And then we're gonna say, I want to output all of our downloaded audio files to the audio files folder. I've already created that over here and you can see I have well over a hundred different mp3 files from all the Alex Hormozy videos so in your case what you'll need to do is just right click scripts create a new folder and call it audio files so when I run this I'm just gonna call it audio files 2 just to show you guys an example of how this works so if I save it 
it'll start running and then if i open up this you'll start to see look we're getting new mp3 files just going all the way down and just going to keep downloading over and over and over again so this is going to take a second so i'm going to pause it but just know that's how it works so let's go ahead and move on to the next step all right we're officially on step two and in this step we're going to transcribe all the audio files we just downloaded in step one and the way we're going to do that is by using the assembly ai website basically what they've done is they've built a wrapper around the whisper api that was made by openai and they They've just made it a lot easier to use. They provide example code scripts that we're going to use. So here's just an example of basically the code I've kind of copied and tweaked for our use case. But uh, what you'll see is they have step-by-step -step instructions showing us how to download YouTube videos and to pull out the transcription. There's a few things I wanted to show you real fast. You're going to need to come in here and set up an account. This is completely free. However, the part that's not free is you're going to need to load your account with a few dollars because the transcription does cost a little bit of money. So just for reference points, uh, it cost me $3.15 to transcribe all of the videos from Alex Ramosi. 100 videos, $3. Honestly, that's a steal. So you're gonna need to upload some money to this account once you create it. The second thing that you're gonna need to do is if you go over to the step-by-step -step instructions, you'll notice that they have this authorization and it's already populated with your API key. So you're gonna to wanna to copy that and you're actually wanna go paste it over here into your .environment file. These are my environment variables. I'm gonna change them, so it doesn't matter. You can look at them all. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is copy and paste it right here. All right, now that we've kind of talked about that, let me actually walk you back over through this transcribe YouTube videos uh, script once again so you can actually see what's going on. What we're going to do is two things. First, we're going to point to our audio directory, which in our case was this audio files here. I'm actually going to go ahead and paste the command we're going to use too, just so it all makes sense. We're going to point to our audio files and we're going to say, hey, I want to transcribe every single one of the videos in here and I want to output them over to our transcripts folder over here. In this case, mine's empty. The real folder for me was actually right here, video transcripts, but I wanted to run it just so you guys can see what would happen. So if I run it, what's gonna happen is you'll see that it's gonna upload each one of the MP3 files. This process actually will take a minute. Full disclosure, this probably took about one hour to actually run through completely. So like I said, you're gonna wanna walk away and come back when it's done. When it is finished, you'll end up with a file just like this with a bunch of JSON files that actually have the transcriptions from the YouTube video. So now that we're completely done with step two, we're on to step three, where we're going to load everything up to Pinecone. So let's go. All right, welcome to step number three, where we're gonna start uploading all of our transcripts to the Pinecone database. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail on what the Pinecone database is, because I've done that in my last video here, where we talked to a single YouTube video, but just at a very high level, know that Pinecone is a vector store database it's where we can store vectors. And you might be asking, what the heck is a vector? Well, just know that a string of text, like, hey, how are you, could be converted into a long, array of numbers. And we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, feel free to do some more digging, but just know it's going to be very crucial for us when we start to ask our large language model questions. It's going to help us uh, pull out context from our different videos, uh, more specifically our transcripts. So, But all you need to know for this tutorial is that you need to log into Pinecone and set up an account if you haven't already done that. And once you've already set up an account, just know you might be put on a wait list just because so many people are trying to use this tool, but it's definitely worth it. So you're going to want to sign up and it's completely free to use. But once you've signed in, what you're going to want to do is click this create index. Now I'm just gonna make a dummy one. So let's just say we wanted to talk to a different YouTuber. In this case, let's say we're doing one for Mr. Beast. You just give it an index name of Mr. Beast. We need to say that the dimensions are 1536. All you need to know is OpenAI set this uh, constraint right here. So just copy and paste that number. And then when it comes to pod type, you're gonna wanna set it to P1 for faster queries because we're only talking to 100 videos. We're mostly focused on speed. And once you do that, you'll hit create index and just know that you can only have one index at a time. So that's why uh, I'm not gonna create it. Once your index is fully created, there's a few things that you need to copy over to your environment variables. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and pull mine up so you can see, but we need to pull in the API key, the environment variable, and the pinecone index. This would have been that uh, that Mr. Beast text that I just did earlier, basically whatever the name of your index was. Next, the pinecone environment comes from right here, this US Central 1 GCP. And then finally, your pinecone API key comes from over here. So you're gonna wanna just copy and paste this value back over to environment files. All right, fantastic. That's how you actually get everything set up working with Pinecone. Now it's up to us to start actually uploading our transcripts to Pinecone. That's what this Pinecone helper file does. And let me walk you through a few of the most important parts. So at a very high level, what we're doing is we want to point to our videos data. This is our CSV file where we stored the links and title of each one of our YouTube videos. And then next we say, hey, where are all, all of our transcripts? In our case, that is over here. Our transcripts are right here and our our scrape channel will pull from right here. And then what's it's gonna do, and this is the important part that I want you to guys to get familiar with because Langchain actually can start pulling out metadata and that's how what we're gonna use later to actually go, oh, you talked about this video? Well, here's a link to that video. 
So here's actually where the magic happens. What we're gonna do is we are going to grab a, tr a transcript and a URL and a title of video. And then what's gonna happen is we're going to chunk up that large transcript into a thousand tokens. And then we're gonna have a little overlap on both sides of 500 tokens to help us kind of like smooth out data between transcripts so we don't just get hard cutoffs. So we're gonna just think of just a bunch of tiny little, a small bunch of different po uh, portions of the transcript. After that, what we're going to do is set our metadata. This is gonna be our video URL and our video title and then we're going to create a document. Documents are the underlying most important part of how Langchain is able to start feeding outside data into our large language models. So we're going to be creating hundreds upon hundreds of different documents with our chunk of text and also, hey, where did that text came from? After that, we start uploading everything to our Pinecone, just like that. That's at a high level. Like I said, if you want more detail, definitely check out my other video where I talk to a single YouTube video. I go more in depth on all this stuff. Once you've done that, now you know how it works. You're actually gonna run this command right here. And again, just at a high level, we're going to say, hey, here's my CSV file. Here's where all my transcripts are. Start uploading it to Pinecone. And this part is very fast. So now we can go ahead and head over to step four. So we're in step number four. And in this step, what we're going to do is set up our backend API to start handling questions that we submit from our front end. And before we dive into the code, I actually just wanted to walk you through a few of the technologies that makes this possible. So the first thing is I'm using the T3 stack, which is the best way to start a full stack type safe Next.js application. So under the hood, it's Next.js with a bunch of other features that make it awesome. So you'll see it when you actually head over to the website portion of the code. This is structured just like a Next.js project. Then uh, what we're going to do is to start handling all of our different questions is we're going to use this tool called LangChain. LangChain basically it's kind of a, a wrapper around all of these different tools that are available for large language models and they just make it very easy to use. In our case, what we're specifically going to be using is the conversational retrieval Q&A chain. Just know that this works with indexes, in our case, our Pinecone index. And then what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to basically ask a question, see which text in our database is similar to our question, and then send it right back. This is actually the file where most of the magic came from. I had to update it to add a few extra things that you're about to see in the code. All right. So now that you've seen that, let's hop back over and look at the API endpoint that we're going to set up. And as I mentioned earlier, we use Next.js, so they use dynamic routing. So all of our APIs are going to get set up within our source, pages, API, and then in our case, LangChain. So this is where our API endpoint where we're going to be sending all of our questions. And I just want to walk you through a few of the very high level things that are going to happen. So first off, what we're going to do is we're actually going to extract some of the information from our query. More specifically, we're going to pull out the question that the user asked us and then a chat history. And you'll notice that I've already actually added in some text. In this case, this is going to be context for our conversation. In our case, I said, hey, your name is Alex Ramosi. I've trained you based on hundreds of videos that you've created. Do your best to provide helpful answers about yourself. Don't respond with I don't know. Basically provide suggestions. The reason I had to do that is because whenever you just talk to a model without context, it has no idea what you're asking. So that's why I provided that little bit of context right there. And then we're going to make sure they passed in everything they were supposed to. After that, we are going to set up our Pinecone client and we're going to pass in a few different environment variables. Uh, what you'll notice is you'll have a .env file again and you'll need to paste in all those same Pinecone variables from before. And you'll also need to go grab your OpenAI key from the OpenAI website. I'm not gonna walk you through that. That's been documented a hundred times, very easy to do. Just log in and go grab a developer key. But after that, what's gonna be pretty cool is we're gonna set up our vector store. And here comes the important part where we actually start talking with our conversational retrieval Q and A chain. What we're gonna do is pass in OpenAI. We're going to pass in our Pinecone. And then what we're gonna do is start passing it along questions in our chat history. This is basically where all the magic happens to where we go, hey, I want to ask you this question. We pass it over to LangChain. LangChain starts searching through our Pinecone database and pulls out the specific videos that will end document that relate to our question. And then what we're going to do is just bundle these up in a nice little JSON package and then send that back to our front end client. And that's pretty much how the entire back end works. Very straightforward. Now what we're going to do is move over to our chat front end component built with React and I'm going to walk you through that real fast. Welcome to step number five where we're going to start working on the front end user interface. And before we start actually diving into any of the code, I think it's super helpful to see what you're going to be building. Here's what our main page looks like. It's actually mobile responsive to where it can actually shrink and grow. We're using Tailwind CSS that actually comes when we start to use the T3 stack and honestly a huge fan of it. But yeah, it's mobile responsive. And just to be a little bit more specific, what we're going to focus on building here is this chat window right over here. So let's go ahead and dive over to the code real fast. 
list. Here's the page you were just looking at. This is actually all the like source code for it at a very high level. Um, we had the Alex card, which is a picture of Alex, a picture of me, the branding card, and then the part we're gonna be focusing on, the chat component right here. I'm gonna walk you through this pretty quickly at a high level, and uh, then we'll actually go use the front end, and I'll show you exactly which part relates to which. All right, so let's dive in. Here's a breakdown of the most important parts of this component that you need to be aware of. First off, we define a message interface that helps us determine who's sending the message, us or the AI, the contents of that message, and then also if there are any sources. These are gonna be the little things under the message from the AI that says, hey, click this video to learn more. Next, we have just some generic state management within our React component. And the next major part is this handle submit function. Basically what's happening here is we pull out the question that came from right here. We append it to any of the chat history. So it'll just be the latest message in a long chain of, of our chat. And then what we do is we send it off to that backend API that we just created a few moments ago. Once we get a response back from our backend endpoint, we're going to pull out the answer, which is the actual answer from the AI. Also the array of sources to say, hey, these are the videos where this came from. So what you'll notice that we continue to add this answer to our chat history, and then we set up our messages to show that, hey, this came back from the, the AI. Here's the answer, and here's the list of sources. So that's kind of the core logic. And before I just we uh, dive into the actual HTML, I think it's important for us to actually do a quick example over here on the front end, and then we'll hop back over to there to the UI. All right, let's make this full screen before we start going into example. Now, uh, just for example purposes, what I'm going to say is, hey, Alex, I would like to create a software business do you have any advice before I get started? So what it's gonna do right now is it's going to send that question off to our backend. Our backend is gonna go see which document in our Pinecone database are similar to it. Pull those out. It's gonna feed them into our OpenAI uh, large language model. It's going to come back with a actually on target answer and then provide sources to different YouTube videos that are very similar. You can see um, Alex actually recommends starting off with a boring business that have established needs and then you know people want more customers so people are happy to pay for that. But what's cool is it will actually show you these sources. He thinks starting a software business is a bad idea uh, in this video, he talked about how he chooses an execution risk every time over an idea risk because he's 100% able to control his execution. So that's pretty much how the tool works. And now that you've kind of seen how it looks actually visually, let's hop back over to our HTML code over here and walk through it. So here's an overview of the most important parts of our HTML code. First off, what we're going to do is if we don't have any messages, we're going to let our users know that there's no messages yet. They need to start chatting. Next, if we do have messages, what we're going to do is start looping through each of them. And I'm going to come back to this here in a second, but just know we're going to loop through each of our different messages. If it is a user, we want to push it to the right. If it's not, we're just going to have it go left. We're also going to change the color of the message depending if it's a user or a message from the AI. And then what we're going to do is actually show off the message itself, the message content right here. And after that, what we're going to do is map through our different messages, the sources that come with each one of them. And you'll notice that we're doing some filtering. The reason why I do this is because if you ask a question about software videos or software businesses in our case, what would actually happen is it would used to come back with two to three documents that would link to this source. So we would just end up with a bunch of the same links and that's that just wasn't visually appealing. So we actually filter through to make sure that we only show one individual link per message to make sure it looks nice. And then what we do is this little chunk of code right here is actually the little card right here that you can click on to watch the different YouTube videos. So just for example, if I click on this, it'll actually take you to this video. So that's kind of how it works at a high level. And then there's obviously a form down here where you could uh, type in your text message and hit the button to submit it. So that's pretty much how the code works at a high level. All right, so if you made it this far into the video, you now know how to download YouTube videos using Python. You know how to transcribe them using Assembly AI. You know how to upload transcriptions up to your Pinecone vector database. You now know how to build a backend API that works with Langchain. And you also know how to build a front-end React chat component. So congrats, guys. Y'all are making a ton of headway. If y'all do have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to drop a question down in the comments below or shoot me a DM on Twitter. And I also want to mention that I hold office hours for all my viewers. It's completely free. I just want to get to know you guys better and help y'all out. There's a Calendly link in the description below that you can click it and schedule a quick 30 minute session with me. I'm excited to get to meet y'all. Outside of that, I just want to say there's a ton of other AI tutorials on my channel. So if you enjoyed this, you're definitely going to want to check out some of the other great content that I have on this channel. Please be sure to also hit the subscribe button if you find this valuable and to hit the like button. It really helps out my channel. But with that guys, it's a wrap and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.